Hey, and welcome, Miss Kira Speaks. Before we get started, I ask that you watch the videos till the end, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. We are here for another episode of Our Kind of People. There's no new episode this week, so I figured this would be a good time to jump in and play catch up. It's season one, episode nine, twice as hard, twice as good. As the episode opens, Aunt Piggy is back, y'all. Angela and Nikki are happy to see her like she didn't disappear like a thief in the night. Nikki wants to catch up, but she has to go, you know, see Taylor. Angela asks, what did you do? Who did you see? And Aunt P says she hung out with some girls talking about people and whipping ass and bid whiz. Um, Then Nate walks in looking like he came fresh out the shower. Piggy wants to know what they've been up to while she was gone. Nate says he's been back and forth on the ferry to Boston, too, looking for a job and a new place. Um, and then when he leaves, Angela's like, Tyreek says the same thing, but it's nothing going on. There's nothing there. There's nothing unresolved um, between she and Nate. And I don't know that that's true, but okay, Angela. He's here to co-parent Nikki. And Aunt P says, unfinished business always comes back around. Angela goes to grab them some coffee and she says from the other room, Tyreek hasn't been the same since since you left. Lord, give me strength, Aunt P says. Child, we see Raymond and he's in the shower looking all delicious. Leah comes in and she joins him. He's been in there half an hour. He's thinking about this chess game that him and Teddy are playing and thinking about all the damage he's caused to Darman, um, tangling it up with this shady shell company. Leah apologizes and they discuss a little more um, in their conversation about Leah's efforts. And Raymond plans to show Teddy who Leah is married to. Quincy and Sloan are kissing in the hallway when Aunt, Aunt Jackie comes calling. And Quincy, he goes and hides. She tells her she did beautiful work on the banister. Keep that same hustle when you tackle the great room. Grandma leaves. Quincy pops out for some more kisses. Sloan says sneaking around has been stressful and she wants to get out and have some real fun. So he invites her to join him. Um, he says Mariah is having a party that evening. She's down. So Angela catches up with Tyreek. He's on his morning jog. What is this, an ambush? Wow. Attitude much, Tyreek? He says you could have called. She says she has. She says she's been trying and she does not try. She... Thought they were building something. By Tariq says he's been far too busy working on pitching the skyboxes. Seems like you're busy too. Maybe you want to try again with Nate. He's given her space to figure that out. But she says she didn't ask for space. And he's, she says he's using it as an excuse to avoid talking about how he really feels. He says she's doing the same. Angela's heard enough, so she's out of there. The ladies are at a Gray City meeting and Leah introduces Olivia. She is the Dean of New Prospects and she's going to explain what's going to happen over the next few weeks, like what the next few weeks is going to entail. So some of the chapter's most prestigious alumni will be there to vet um, vet the prospects. The first evening, the first event is that evening and it's the crab oil. And then the shade towards Angela begins. Some will meet expectations and others will not. Leah tries to interject, but Olivia says she doesn't think some of the alumni will get her charm. Her has a name, Angela says, and why not? I've proven that I want the sisterhood and I'm down with the public service. Is this about my bank account or lack thereof? That's a good question. Miss Vaughn, as much as we know how as much as we know how much you love making a one woman show out of every event, we have actual business to attend to. I'm just speaking up for myself. Olivia tells her, Gray City's no when Zakurum must take preference over your opinion. Leah tries to put an end to it, but Olivia continues, there's a certain refinement that comes from being born to this rare air that is impossible to counterfeit. She talks about not inviting someone someone in who's not on their level. You know what's not counterfeit, Angela says? This blood. Leah tries to stop her and pull her off to the side. Angela's like, listen, I don't need this. Leah's like, um, actually you do, girl. Come this way with me. So 
they jo the two of them, they join Teddy in the office and he's like, we got bad news. Since Alex Rivera exposed him, Franklin Holdings has been taken, taken a hit and the void voted to stabilize by putting all of the assets into the stadium deal. No more incubator program, no more distribu distribution deal. Franklin Holdings cannot invest in anything now. Angela is devastated. Leah tells her the Gray Cities support black businesswomen from within the ranks. Win over the Gray Cities and you will stay on track to your goal. Leah says she will do whatever she can to help. But my question is, with all the money that they have between the Franklins and the DuPonts, no one had any personal money to invest in Angela? Just a question. So Nate is cooking chili and Angela comes in and asks, no, and she tells him what happened with the incubator program. And he tells her, if anybody can charm, if anybody can charm anyone, it's you. You're tenacious. Get your eye back on the prize. So she thanks him and asks how his prospects are. And she, he's like, the only offers that he's been having, um, the only offers he had hiring are the kind of jobs that would land them up back, land him back inside. Um she walks over to him and she puts her hand on his chest. What are you doing? Giving you some of my tenacity. He says he'll take it. Judging by the look on his face, I bet he will. Angela, you know, she could be in some real spiritual stuff sometimes. Uh, when she wants to. She's got to go study. So Olivia goes to see Raymond. She is tight. She found out about Jack selling his Darman shares to Teddy. He says he's handling it. If Teddy owns that much stock, they have no chance of getting their company back. He and Jack, they had a little dust up. He's going to give him a beat to cool down, and then he will get him to see the light. He tells her Teddy has Darman tied up in a shell corporation. Olivia says, is Teddy setting Darman up for, the, for a fall? When dad passed away, he put me in charge. Stand down. So Nikki's on the beach with Taylor and the rest of the Debs and they talk about the summer almost being over and it's almost time for them to head back to boarding school soon. So Lauren asks Nikki if she can talk to Taylor for a minute. She tells her she thinks that her mom is cheating on her dad with her uncle Jack. She thought they were working on their marriage. She, she's like, you know, she wonders, should she say something? And Taylor's like, listen, do you have legit proof? So she, she, she shows her the key card. Um to his room that she found her mom's card. And she says her mom's, Taylor says her mom's third marriage ended when she told her that she saw her stepdad having lunch with a woman alone. Turns out the woman was his boss, but they still had a had a full on family implosion. You sure you wanna take that risk? Lauren isn't sure. Taylor gives her a hug. And I mean, I guess because she's a child, but the correct answer would be, be straightforward. Go have a talk with your mom. Find out what the truth of the matter is. Because it's really not what you think. So, Leah has all the tools for Angela to study from her mom's memorabilia. As her... From when she was president. Um, she gives her the full rundown. And she tells her Giselle Hillgard is the one she needs to know. She runs a venture capitalist firm out of Boston. She was just, you know... And Angela's like, you know, I was just expecting some tips and some pointers. And she thanks her. Tips and tips and pointers are for family, are for friends. I go deeper for family. So she goes looking for a roster and she stumbles upon a photo. When she turns it over, it's Olivia Rose, who's Leah's mom, and Evelyn, who is Angela's mom. It's titled Gray City's Perspective T 1984. She doesn't show Angela, Angela the picture. Back at home, Nikki helps Angela study for the night's events. While, while they're studying, Nikki says she wants to apply to Lauren and Taylor's boarding school. Kids, Nikki want to go running behind Taylor. And Angela also caught that. She loves that she wants bigger for herself, but boarding school may have to wait. She tells her that the incubator program is shut down, so no distribution deal. So plans to so she plans to impress the Gracies at the function and find an investor. She's gonna get so she goes. She's like, I think I'm gonna get Giselle a sample bag. So Olivia is making her rounds, and this time she's come to talk to Leah, who's looking at fabrics. Pledges are your lane. Everything else is mine. If we're talking about lanes, Teddy Franklin has jumped the median. Scooping up Jack's Darman shares has Raymond in a chokehold. 
Are you gonna help him or are you too busy? Raymond doesn't need her help. All the other stuff is nice, but the job you should be working twice as hard is at twice as hard at is bolstering your husband's success. Thanks for your pearls of wisdom and killing feminism while you're at it. She shows her the picture she found of her and Rose and Eve. She says, Olivia says, Rose believed that Eve could rise in the membership with the Gray Cities and, and truly build some and truly build something for herself. Um, but instead, Eve took the shortcut to success through Teddy's bed. To, through Teddy's bed. Man, Olivia is in there talking cash money-ish. She says Eve was trash and Angela is proving to be no better. Her behavior is a disgrace. And the fact that you can't see it makes me question your leadership. So Raymond is trying to work and Teddy's over there loudly mixing himself a drink. Raymond calls him out on it. Um... We find out that Jack was the one who came to Teddy about his Darman shares. Not the greatest negotiator, Teddy says. He took my first offer. He will have controlling interest of Darman foods by the end of the week. What will you have? My youth, Raymond says. He says, you're jealous and I have the rest of my life ahead of me and time is no longer on your side. Enjoy your nightcap. Shade that hurt. You can tell by the look on Teddy's face. So Angela goes to get some hair products and two vials fall on the floor. When Nate gets home, she's sitting outside. His bags are packed. She tells him she found drugs and reads him down while he stands there and says nothing. I cannot have you around if you're going to break her heart, Nikki. Um, and then... She walks away. And I was like, why did this man stand here and say nothing? I mean, he shook his head, but he never really said anything. He de didn't defend himself at all. So Jack is pouring a drink when Olivia comes knocking. She's bought a bottle of gin that they both like, apparently. You're the only DuPont who isn't mad at me. Raymond doesn't need to know she was there. Let's drink and let's chat. Sorry, y'all. So the kids are at a party. Um, they're partying at a bonfire on the beach. Um, Quincy has bought Sloan. Well, look who decided to show up. And you bought a girl. I was wondering why you never text me back. This is the girl, Mariah, whose party it's supposed to be. Quincy introduces them. And then he brings up that Sloan's the house manager's granddaughter. The girl makes a face and she walks away. And Sloan says, don't ever introduce me like that again. Everybody knows house manager is rich people code for maid. He apologizes. She's worried about being accepted and he tells her, you have nothing to worry about. So Jack and Olivia, they're having drinks and we learn that Olivia was the fun mom. Who would have thought? Not I. This, um, this man asked her if she wants to do a bump. No one of good breeding does cocaine anymore. Anymore? Um, I need my boys to get along, to keep your shares to yourselves and out of the hands of Teddy Franklin. You two are like brothers. Not anymore, Jack says. And he's tired of Raymond's constant judgment. Teddy's going to pay him a fortune for his shares, and then he's going to be done with Raymond. Olivia did not like that. Did your father ever tell you how the DuPonts and the Harmons formed Darman? Our great-grandfathers were best friends, like me and Raymond used to be. Not quite. Your great-grandfather was no more than Raymond's great-grandfather, no more to Raymond's great-grandfather than a guarantor for a loan at the time when black people could not get one on their own. Your family did us a solid and we returned the favor a hundredfold by allowing generations to, to participate financially. Those shares are not yours to sell. You're not my mother, no more than a guarantor. That's what she says. So she gets up, she's ready to leave. He stops her. We will celebrate the shares being sold, and the severing of families. I am the end of the Harmon line, right? And he grabs her and she kind of like throws her hands up and she shoves him a little bit, um, slight shove, and he falls into the glass table. Jack is going, y'all, right through the last of the line, Olivia says, and she leaves with her DNA all over the room including her lipstick on that martini glass. 
So the kids are still at the bonfire on the beach and Nikki asks Taylor if her boarding school gives scholarships to those that can't afford tuition. When Lauren comes over, she needs to borrow Taylor again. She's figured out what she wants to do. She tells her cousin, Nikki, it's personal. So they get to Jack's bungalow and before they go in, Taylor's like, do you think this is a good idea? I'm gonna talk, he's a family friend, we're gonna work this out, blah, blah, blah. So they open the door and they find him dead and they leave with Lauren's DNA all over the door handle. Angela is at the Gray City's Boil and she's looking slightly overwhelmed, but she, you know, and she goes over to Giselle and she shows her that she's been doing her research, gives her the rundown of her, her company, her family, Gray City's, you know, the whole, she's done her homework. So Angela, she introduces herself, she introduces her business, Eve's Crown, um, and she just, you know, she really has the gift of gab. So she pulls out curl pudding when Olivia walks over. Have you no decorum? Maybe you should have taken etiquette class with your daughter. Angela looks embarrassed and Olivia is on her soapbox. She pulls Giselle away and just at, just away just as Leah was about to come up and have a word with Mama Liv. But Raymond comes up and tells her it's important. And I mean, the only thing I probably personally wouldn't have done was have the actual product. I probably would offer to send her some of the product, but I definitely think that it's okay to sell yourself and talk about your brands. Again, my personal opinion, either way, Olivia should not have handled Angela like that. But we know she got an issue with Angela. We gonna find out why. So Taylor comes back and Nikki asks her if there's something going on between her and Lauren. Well, you should have thought about that. Now, Taylor is wrong, but fresh off a breakup, you gonna date your cousin's girlfriend? Okay, Nikki. But Taylor's too freaked out by what she just saw. She can't talk right now. Can I call you tomorrow? But Nikki gets upset and she storms off. So Lauren's in her room crying. She's like, I found Uncle Jack dead at his bungalow, but I was too scared to call the police. And Leah asked her, why were you at, why were you and Taylor even there? I found his key card in your car, Lauren says. Leah explains, last week at the beach club, Jack gave her a key card and invited her to, to his bungalow, but he was wasted and it was totally inappropriate and obviously I didn't go. She didn't, she, she apologizes to Raymond that she didn't tell him. And Raymond tells Lauren, listen, we're solid. I think she goes to take a bath. Raymond tells Leah he believes her because she's like, you know, listen, that's what had happened was I'm trying to tell you. So, you know, he said he was angry with him, but he didn't expect it to go this way. So he's going to go and get ahead of the situation. He was really upset that his daughter had to find out like that. So on P, she's watching her program and Angela comes in and asks her where Nate is. And she's like, listen, he is gone. She found drugs in his room and Piggy's face says it all. Angela is talking and she tells her, the drugs were mine. Then. A few weeks ago, Tyreek came to see her and he started asking questions about her father, about his father's past, her past. It just brought up so many memories that it triggered the old me, the me you don't know. I was addicted to crack back in the day and I fell in love with my dealer, Darius. And now I'm going to pause. I'm going to pause right here for the cause. I am going to need y'all to stop doing the legendary Debbie Morgan like this. Okay. On Power Book 2, she's now an alcoholic all of a sudden. And on this show, she used to be addicted to crack. I just stop, please. So she says their love was volatile and one day they were high and they got to fighting and she wasn't going down easy. He had his hand on her neck and she was able to grab a knife from the kitchen counter and she stabbed him and she didn't mean to do it. She didn't mean to kill him. At this point, she is crying. Child, Angela's whole face is like, what? In shock. She didn't want to. She loved him. But she was so scared. So she told Eve, who said her boss, Teddy Franklin, would know what to do. So he had his bodyguard and Tyreek's dad, Calvin, take care of the body. Or was Tyreek's that the bodyguard i don't know the notes are a little sketchy um you must think i'm a monster nope you did what you had to do so she's like she tells her she got the drugs from boston and she had a lot coming at her she's been struggling she needs to go back to her na meetings and she tells her that teddy ain't worth shit 
He's been dangling Darius over her head since they got here and even tried to force her to use it to get Angela to leave town. He can't be trusted. So Leah rolls up on Olivia and issues her a formal warning. She is sick of her behavior towards Angela. This can't be about defending my mother's honor because my mother has never been so mean. So Olivia says she was raised where women were were women were to prop their husband up. She was she married into the Darman family business, but she couldn't be a part of it no matter how many times she asked Vernon, her husband. So this is where we get into the story. This is where we get into the problem. She eventually wore him down and gave, he gave her some money to invest. She chose to back Eve's crown. Heard of it? Yeah, you have. She did it because she trusted Rose and Eve went and slept with Teddy and got pregnant and then arrested. Vernon scolded her, scolded her judgment and took the money back. Leah says, all of this isn't Angela's fault. Leave her alone. You've been censured. And then they're like, you drunk, you drunk. So girl, don't try me. They go their separate ways. Now, Olivia has money. And there's no telling how long Vernon has been in the ground, going on to glory. You know. So why couldn't she start her own business all these years? Why does it have to be dormant? These people in the show, sometimes it don't make sense. So Angela apologizes to Nate and she tells her what, tells him what actually happened. And she's like, the last time that he let her down, it broke her heart. So it was, you know, it was kind of a replay for her. Then she gets a call from Giselle. She wants a meeting. She's all excited. They're laughing and they joke and they kiss. And she says she can't. Nikki just got him back and she's in a complicated thing with Tyreek. And he's like, but you kiss me back. She's like, it's reckless. She apologizes. She leaves. Taylor can't sleep. She pays Lauren a visit. Lauren can't sleep either. They talk and then they kiss. Taylor's always kissing somebody. So Sloan, she's confronting Quincy and they kiss. Everybody's about to get it on the strength, on the strength of Uncle Jack. Okay, so Raymond stops Olivia. We get to the good part and this is the end of the episode. He says he was at the police station giving a statement. He told them he was worried about Jack. He was having a tough time and overindulging. He hadn't heard from him in a few days. So he goes by the bungalow and when there's no answer, he asks the manager to check in on him. And that's when they found him. And Olivia, she gives her best shock face, y'all. That's unfortunate. No, what it is is a lie. What's unfortunate is that Lauren found the body first. He pulls out the glass with her lipstick in it, on it in a baggie. I can't imagine there are too many people who drink Harperson's Reserve with this shade of lipstick. I told you to stay out of it. And I'm sure that you're aware, according to the corporate bylaws, that upon his death, Jack's shares revert back to the family. She's aware. Did you think you were going to take over Darman yourself? Damn right, she says. It's about time a woman was in control of this family. Raymond says, this is actually going to turn out quite well for me. And I hate to break it to you. Your chances to run Darman have not come. I'll be taking things from here. Have a good night gives her a kiss, leaves the room, and that is where we get where we end. Again, why not just let Brayman have Darman the way his father intended and start your own business? We got a lot of answers this episode, but there's still a few questions hanging out there to be answered. What questions do you guys have? Put those down in the comments. Um if you've made it this far, put a martini glass emoji in the comments also. So I think there may be three episodes left. I'm not sure. But the show will be back on January 11th for episode 10. So I hope you'll come back and join me. In the meantime, please check out some of my other content. Thank you. Thank you. And before you go, like, subscribe, and share. I appreciate you. Peace.